So welcome everyone. Um, so to, together we will be talking about the uh, Lie group G2 and we will also talk about its Lie algebra and representations a little bit and then uh, we will try to talk about G2 geometry. Um, and so there are a few different ways to think about uh, the group G2 and I think the most natural one is to um, view them as the automorphism group of the octonians. So I'll start by defining the octonians. So here's the definition. Oh, by the way, uh, I actually, I will put my uh, lecture notes uh, on, on my website, so you can find them there. Even right now, uh, this part is there. Um, so octonians, which we usually denote by this letter O, um, or sometimes like this, are an eight-dimensional uh, Unital algebra. Unital just means there's, you know, the, the, not number one, the identity element, uh, with a non-degenerate. Symmetric bilinear form. We will denote that by B. Uh, that satisfies oh, n of u v equals n of u and v, uh, n of u times n of v, where um, and of course for all u and v. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm writing. I'm writing. Yeah, it's it's a associated quadratic form. Yeah, where uh, it's defined by so n of u is just b of u u. Okay. Um, so that's the definition of octonians. Um, so here uh, I, I like to make a few remarks already. Um, so I mean, in over the so here I didn't fix the base field. Uh, it can be, you know, real numbers, complex numbers, or in fact, you know, uh, you can use this in, in any, over any field, uh, except possibly, I mean, uh, well, I, I don't know, I, I'm not sure about the characteristic two case, but you can use this definition over any uh, field. Uh, we will mostly be focusing on uh, real numbers, uh, but sometimes we'll actually need uh, complex numbers as well, especially when we start talking about the Lie algebra representations. We will be using uh, complex uh, version, but it's uh, it, it just makes it easier. But and but as, but it's also essentially equivalent to a real case. Um, okay, so yeah, so this so over real numbers, we will in fact usually this b will just be a, you know simply a metric on this vector space. So it's, so that will, this will be an eight-dimensional inner product space basically, and this norm, what I call norm here, and here is, you know, typically it's actually norm squared. But we will just call it norm. Um, so it's a quadratic form, actually. Um, so these octonians are uh, non-associative algebras. Uh, so the order of the multiplication matters. You have to pay attention to the, how you print, you know, put parentheses. Um, uh, but they're alternative. Okay. Um, so let me write that non-associative, but they're alternative. Alternative means any subalgebra generated by two elements <coughs> is um, associative. And also, I will state this as a fact. Um, over real numbers, there are two different octonians up to isomorphism. Uh, and over complex numbers, there's, there's a unique uh, octonian algebra. Oh. 
Okay, I'll just say all. Oh. So uh, these two real octonions are distinguished by their uh, uh, the symmetric bilinear form. In one case, this B is just a positive definite metric, and in the other case, it's a four-four metric. So it's a um, it, it, its signature is just four. So there's a, I mean four comma four, which is uh, that means there's four-dimensional subspace in which it's positive definite, and four-dimensional subspace in which uh, the metric is negative definite. Um, so, sorry, I'm question. So in case of over C, the B take values in C or C? Yeah, it's, it's C. So uh, actually, this is, this is an important point. This is, over C, this is still symmetric. This is not a Hermitian metric or anything like that. It's just, it's uh, complex linear in both entries. Um, and actually, so that, that, that I mean, over, over so, so actually, that sort of touches to a point about the uh, classification of octonians. Um, so because, I mean, basically over, over o complex numbers, there's only one non-degenerate uh, bi uh, bilinear form. So that's why basically there's only, I mean, that, that, that's one reason why this is, um, there's only one uh, complex octonians. Um, all right. So, now I can state a lemma. I mean, so because they're like up to isomorphism, as I said, like over real numbers there are two, and over complex numbers there's one. We will, I will actually define one very concrete example very soon. Uh, but before I do that, I want to uh, state this lemma. So for u, v, and v prime in octonians, uh, we have n of u b v v prime equals b of u v u v prime and that's equal to b of uh, v u v prime u. So in particular um, For unit u, uh, left or right multiplication is an orthogonal transformation. Right, if, we, if, if u is unit, then well, what that means is basically it's norm squared is one, right? So this, this part is one. So if you multiply by u, you, you can just remove both u's on, from the left side to get this or from the right side to get this. So that's, that's an orthogonal transformation. Uh, um, so, um, okay. The proof of this is uh, pretty short. So um, we just have to use, use one fact about uh, like the associated uh, quadratic form, how to go between, uh, we just need to know how to go between the associated quadratic form and the, this bilinear form. So, I mean, the quadratic form is defined like this using the bilinear form, but you can also define the bilinear form um, for, for an arbitrary u and v in terms of the quadratic form. Uh, so we, I will just write that down and uh, it's just, it's basically just the application of that. So, since, B of V prime, V, v comma V prime is uh, one half N of U, oops, this is, uh, sorry, N of V plus V prime minus N of V minus N of V prime. Um, we get, so if you, if you multiply both sides by n of u, we get this. Okay, so it's um, and now, of course, by the definition, norm is a um, Algebra homomorphism, I mean, um, it's a homomorphism with respect to multiplication. 
So we will just use that. And that will give us okay, one half. Oh. N of u v plus u v prime minus n of u v minus n of u v prime. And this is uh, using this formula back, you know, again, this is p of u v u v prime. Uh, and of course, the, the other uh, equality is proved similarly. Okay, so now. Uh, I, I want to define it, like as I said, like a concrete uh, example. Um, so to define that example, I, I need a triangle. So maybe let's try to fit that triangle in here. Um, I and mean, the reason I'm, I'm giving this, the real reason that I'm giving this example is that because pretty much any time I want to think about octonics, I'll just be uh, using this one because. Uh, I, I'll mostly be interested in positive definite metric, so, and in that case, there's only one uh, octonian up to isomorphism, so we'll just be referring to this example all the time. I mean, especially if, if it comes to computations. So, um, Um, so we, we have this uh, uh, diagram. Okay, so we, I have to put some arrows here. So we'll put arrows like this. And we, we have to, we are orienting each one of those lines, including the circle itself. So we also think of that circle as a, as a line, basically. Okay, so, so this is L here, by the way, if it's not clear. So we have I, J, K, L. Uh, L i L j L k. So this we we think of these seven elements as a plus the uh, num unit element, which we will denote by one, as the generators of a vector space first, and actually they will be orthonormal generators. Um. So, um, okay, again, I, I don't want to mention the uh, base field, so I'll just say let O be generated by the set S, 1, I, J, K, L, L, I, L, J, L, K. Um, um, define B so that uh, S is orthonormal, and basically uh, this this okay. So so from here on, I, I just need to tell you what the multiplication is, and the multiplication is defined as follows. To define multiplication. Oh yeah. So the L i is a L sub i or no L, L times I. Yeah, it's uh, it, yeah, it's I times i. Okay. But but I haven't defined the multiplication, multiplication yet actually. But yeah. Um, um, so for to define multiplication, what we do is we we take a oriented line like this. So from x to y to z, then x times y is z, and all the cyclic permutations. So like z y times z is x and z times uh, x is y. And if, it, if it's the, um, um, it's, if it's an odd permutation, so if it's like y times x, you put a, put a negative. So, so if you have y times x, then you, you need a negative here. So similarly here, if you have z, z times y, you will put a negative, and here it's uh, negative x times z is z times x, which is y. Uh, you do this for all the lines there, and including the circle again. Uh, we also consider that as a as the line, and okay. Finally, we also need 
x squared, y squared, and z squared, they all square to uh, negative 1. So this, this completes the definition. So, uh, and this gives you the, uh, because we, we, so here when I say orthonormal, I mean the, with the positive definite metric. Um, so this gives you the uh, definition of octonians. Uh, it's, it's not very trivial to actually prove that this, is, this, this satisfies the definition. So we will just skip that part. Um, we'll try to introduce more tools. Uh, we can, for example, define conjugation. Um, well, first of all, we can define real parts of octonians by as the span of one. Uh, well, okay, whatever. And the imaginary part of the octonians to be the orthogonal complement of that. And I understand the, what this discussion is about the one before. Line. This is defining a algebra defined for every line under. So, so what I'm saying is, first of all, octonians are is this uh, vector space generated by these vectors, and there's a metric which is so that there's are ortho, there's are orthogonal, and then I need to define the multiplication. So what I'm saying is, if you have a line like this in that picture in, in this triangle here. Define my question from the. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, mm. What is it? Yeah, that's, so we, we have, you know, one here. So the, the span of that in this vector space is called the real, real part of the octonians. And the uh, orthogonal part is just the imaginary part. So it's sort of you, like, you know, as in, you know, complex numbers or quaternions. Um, yeah. yeah are, are there any other questions? Okay. Um, so, so, I mean, of course, this, this, this definition also, you can apply this to, like, to a given element of octonians. If you have an element of octonian, you can just decompose it as a you know, real part plus an uh, imaginary part, which helps with most of the computations. How much time have I got? Okay. Um, so, and, and using this decomposition, we can also define uh, conjugation. Okay, we'll denote it like this. Uh, U bar will be the real part of U minus the imaginary part of U. So again, just like in complex number or complex numbers, right? So um, you just keep the real part, you just make the ne uh, imaginary part negative. And then, uh, Now it's easy to prove that u, the conjugate of u v is v conjugate times u conjugate. Uh, it's, this is not very hard to prove uh, using the, this definition. Uh, you can just sort of prove it on the over the ba base elements. Um, and, uh, but this implies something. Uh, which, is, which is useful. So if you just take u conjugate multiply it with u and take all of its conjugate, this will simply be again u conjugate u, but this equality can, all, can only hold if, if this is a real element. Okay. And another exercise is um, the inner product now can be expressed as the real part of so inner product of u and v can be expressed as a real part of u conjugate times v. And um, uh, now we can define the group G2. And uh, we will define it to be the automorphism group of octonians. So there are linear maps. I mean, if you want, you can sort of think of this as just GL8R or like whatever your field is. Um, let's just say R um, such that A of U times V is AU AV. So this product here. 
So uh, we can define G2 to be the automorphism group of octonius like this. So you use the uh, I mean, the same thing, happen, or, you know, you can use the same definition for complex or any other field as well. Um, so far, I explained everything both for complex and reals. So I, yeah. Take inner product. I mean, inner product is, is not inner product anymore, like over complex numbers, it's just symmetric by linear form. Uh, so it's complex linear in both entries, not uh, you know anti-linear in one of them. It's just complex linear. So actually, that's why I wanted to give the definition using this symmetric rather than inner product. Yeah. Um, and of course, being an automorphism of, a, of an uh, unital algebra, G two of course preserves the real part. It has to take one to one, the identity element to identity element. Um, so actually, you can think of G2 as a subgroup of GL7R because of that, because the one will always be fixed. Um, and in fact, we will prove some properties of G2 now, the, the group G2. Um, so for the first thing we will prove is uh, G2 is a... Um, Uh, the elements of G2 are orthogonal transformations of the octonians. So, I mean, this is just, you know, again, if you want to think about it that way, this is just um, 07 or 07R. Uh, sorry, well, I mean, I guess because I'm saying octonians, it's 08, but it's really 07 as, again, uh, because it fixes the real part. Preserve the algebra structure. Yes, algebra structure. So, but it also preserve the metric. Product, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Inner product. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that's a proposition. Yeah. So because it's uh, you know it's not encoded in the. Uh, I mean, it's not clear from this definition that it preserves that, but. Uh, uh, but they said that B is a real part of the product. Oh. Yeah. I mean, of course, we will, yeah, we will use that. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, like, is, is that your objection? I mean, so, so here, so the thing is, I mean, this, um, um, okay, I mean, so, so the, this exercise is um, perhaps easier on, for this, like, concrete definition, but uh, um, it's it's less clear what what to, you know what it is for uh, for I mean of course they are all isomorphic so so you can sort of cheat and say that you know it's just this is you know any octonian is just this this octonian and like you can prove using everything I mean using these exercises and that's actually sort of what I'm doing here. You, uh, you define octonians really octonians like the question in the problem back. I mean yeah. this real part of U bar V mm -hmm. can be complex number if you define the yes, 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 complex yes. octonians. That, yeah, that's true. And over in vector spaces or complex numbers. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Real means that it's taking yeah. value of the field. Yeah, one, one, yeah, one, yes, yes, yes. One, one, yeah, that, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, is, was that the comment? Okay, yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, the, the, yeah, it's real value actually means that it's in the field. Like, whatever the field is. Uh, it can be a complex number in particular. Um, um, okay, so... so So if we take an element of G2, so we, we just want to prove that it's in the orthogonal group, so we have to show that this, this thing is uh, B of U, U. So, but by this exercise, it's just a real part of a, a, a U bar AV. And because it preserves the real part, this is simply a real part of a U bar AV. And because A is a, uh, algebra homomorphism. This is a real part of A U bar V and then that is because again you know A preserves a real part this is simply a real part of uh, U bar V. So it's just um, V of U V. Can you explain the second equality? This one here? Yeah. Uh, so Again, because you know A preserves the real part, it's it's easy to show that. Uh, 
uh, if you apply a here on both sides, it, it just commutes with the conjugation. Like it's um, like it's like a couple of lines of you know computation from here. Um, but basically, because it commutes with the uh, real part, and then it's also, of course, linear. Um, so maybe I'll state this as a remark. Uh, so what I just said over there, because G2 fixes the real part, it's actually, you can think of it as a subgroup of GL7R, or similarly, the orthogonal group of the imaginary octonians. So, so since G2 fixes um, real octonians, G2 is actually a subgroup of the imaginary octonians, uh, orthogonal group of the imaginary octonians, which is Oh, so. Okay. So now we, we want to understand like G2 a little bit better. Like it, we want to understand its topology. Uh, and for that, we, we need an, um, one more definition. So we will say that U, V, W, these are three uh, imaginary octonians. So they're called, so this, this triple is called a G2 triple. Um, if, um, if the set U, V, U, V, and W is orthonormal. So we take three elements and we call them uh, G2 triple U, V, if, if this, they're all, the, all three are orthonormal and also U times V is a unit vector and they're all ortho, uh, orthogonal. And of course U, V will be a unit vector because um, norm is again, you know, is a homomorphism. But we just require that to be or, or, orthogonal to all, uh, all three of them. And typical example of, of a trip, G2 triple is uh, I, J, and L, okay? Um, so in, in, the, in, the, in that triangle, so, or here. So, so these three form a G2 triple. Um, so, so this is about something about notation. U, V, now you can call them U cross V, right? Actually, that's true, but like, I, I didn't want to use that. Like, I didn't define cross product yet, yeah, so I, didn't, I don't want to use that. But it, it's equivalent in this case, yeah. So now the theorem is uh, G2, the group is actually uh, homeomorphic to the set of all G2 triples. And, and this, this will help us like, understand the topology of uh, G, the group G2. Um, and uh, I mean, we, we will not, uh, okay, I mean, so there might be some parts that I will, I might leave as an exercise, but uh, um, so basically what we will do is we will just define a bijection and it will be sort of clear that it's, an, it's a continuous map. Um, so um, we will sort of skip that part. So, so first we want to define a map from G2 to the set of all G2 triples. Okay, so if you take A, uh, from G2, oops. Uh, 
you just send it to AI AJ AL. And um, so that, that's, the, that's, that's the map from G2 to G2 triples. And uh, we, we can see that this is a G2 triple because we know that G2 is an orthogonal transformation. And we, we start with a uh, G2 triple. IJL, remember, was a G2 triple. So it preserves, um, I mean, because, it's an, because G2 is an orthogonal transformation, uh, the, the image will also be a G2 triple. So, so this, this condition will be satisfied. Um, and basically, um, well, yeah. So, th so this gives us a map from G2 to G2 triples. And the inverse of this map is, uh, is like sort of, well, okay. So now, okay, let's, let's discuss how, what the inverse is. Uh, so if you take u, v, w, now, um, so there exists a unique um, algebra homomorphism. And be be because i, j, and l are algebra generators, so there's a unique algebra homomorphism which will take these three vectors to, uh, sorry, which will take i, j, l to these three vectors. Um, and in fact, it's not very hard to show that it's, it's, an, it's invertible. Um, um, by, by, I mean, you can actually explicitly construct this inverse uh, by basically you know, writing down a map that will uh, take UVW to IJL. Uh, and, and, and these two correspondences are uh, inverse to each other and they are continuous. So they, this establishes the uh, homomorphism uh, between the, these two uh, uh, spaces. So, so this is like, you basically it looks like same, similar to the algebraic, like you identify matrices with uh, with yeah, yeah. So actually, that's true. So like you can, you know, once I define that concrete, uh, you know, uh, once I pick that concrete definition, so this is basically just looking at the first, second, and fourth column of that seven by seven matrix. Um, and once you have these four, three columns, uh, it's it, there's a unique way to construct the other uh, remaining columns because the third column is actually the product of the first two because k is you know i times j. And so on, yeah. Um, so now we need a little bit of a t technical uh, proposition um, because we, we would like to define at some point we would like to define a cross product structure on a, on, a, on this imaginary octonians. Um, and this, this proposition will be helpful to us for that purpose. So, so if we take two perpendicular imaginary quaternions, uh, octonions, sorry. Um, then u times v is in the imaginary octonians and moreover um, uv is perpendicular to both u and v okay so i mean to, to a trained eye uh, what we're saying is basically, so we're, we're, we're sort of saying that uh, we can use this octonian multiplication to define a cross product structure, basically. Um, but, okay, so we, well, all right. Um, all 
right, so, so the proof of this is, um, is not very, uh, you know, difficult, actually. So we just look at the real part of uv. Um, so be, we, we just want to say that that's zero, right? But real part of uv is just the uh, inner product of u bar with v. Uh, and this is because u is imaginary, bar is just putting a minus. So it's the inner product minus the inner product of u and v, but we said that they're perpendicular, so this is zero. So therefore, um, this, this, this product is, is an imaginary octonian. And uh, the second part actually follows from uh, the, 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 f the first lemma that we wrote. Uh, remember, u. Multiplication by a unit octonian was an orthogonal transformation. Um, th and that, uh, that tells you that um, UV will be, be, be... Okay, maybe let's, let's just show quickly one of them. Because these, these are in the in imaginary octonians, they are perpendicular to one. So they will... And multiplying by u will preserve that relation. So, like one is so this set is orthonormal, imply, which and this implies um, by the first lemma that we wrote um, u u v is orthonormal. Like o n means orthonormal. How much time do I have? It's about 20 minutes? Okay. Um, so now we will say something topological finally. Um, the set of all G2 triples. And therefore, the G2 itself. Um, is an S3 vibration over uh, V27. So this is V27 is the Stiefel manifold. I mean, the proof will be much more clear than this statement, actually. Um, it's the Stiefel manifold of orthonormal two frames in sound space. So basically, I mean, we, we just have to um, like think, think about the basic definition of being a G, G2 triple. And it's, so UVW is a G2 triple if UV, UV and W is orthonormal. So, so what this means is, basically, if you if we want to think about the set of all G two triples, uh, basically we can take U to be anything, any unit vector. So that, well, any unit vector in the imaginary octonians. So that's a six dimensional sphere. So there's a six dimensional sphere worth of choices there, and then V can be anything that is perpendicular to that, right? Because uh, we said that. Well, V has to be perpendicular to U, just by definition of being orthonormal. And uh, U times V will be automatically orthonormal to these things uh, by this proposition. So we don't, uh, so that's why we're free to choose V to be anything, as long as it's perpendicular to U. Um, so if you, if you think about the projection to the first two, that's clearly the set of all, um, 
two frames in seven space, uh, orthonormal two frames in seven space, um, and the 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 fiber, the, the W, um, can only live inside a four dimensional space, right? So because it has to be orthonormal to U, V, and U, V. These are all imaginary uh, octonions by that proposition uh, and by definition. So there are three, you know, units, octo uh, imaginary octonions here. So this will be, a, uh, should be perpendicular to all of them. And it should be, um, so, th so that's, there's only uh, like S3 word of choice here. Um, so that's why the fiber is, uh, is uh, S3. Um, and, and, uh, and in fact, um, f from this descrip description, it's also clear that this, this v V27 itself is a S5 vibration over S6. What's the map to S3, set of G2 triples from uh, is, is, uh, to S3? What's the map to S3? Uh, I mean, S3 is included in the G2 triples as, uh, so you can, you can take an, you say it's a S3 vibration. Oh, the base space is V27. So yeah, the base space is V27. So you map to the first two. Seven. Yeah, first two of them. Yeah. Yeah, S3 is the fiber. Yeah. yeah. So, like, this, this freedom of choice here is uh, you can just take U and V to be I and J, and then you see that uh, W has to be perpendicular to I, J, K. So that's a four dimensional space, but it also has to be unit. So that's just S3. Yeah, it's. How the from that? I mean, so in the in the prop, like theorem there, I'm saying that I'm, these are homeomorphic, and I'm saying that G two the set of all G two triples is you know has this you know, you know, topology, so automatically G two has that. Uh, which which part? All G two triples. No, no, I mean, so uh, like the, for, it's. Like, for, like the, the only condition from all G2 triples is that they, they should, like these three sh things should be imaginary octonians and they should be perpendicular. So um, you're free to choose what, you know, U, like it can be anything. Uh, you, you can also free to choose V as long as it's also perpendicular to U. So the first two vectors already lives inside V27, the set of all, like two frames in seven space. And then you think about what, what W can be and there's only one additional constraint uh, so it should be, you know, perpendicular to these two, but also it, sh it should be perpendicular to this one. And this proposition here tells us that that's a, like a third direction, that, that's a unit vector in the third direction. So we're sort of eating up three directions here and in, inside the imaginary octonians, there's four more directions to go. But it has to be a, a unit vector, so it's just, uh, so it's an S element of S3 there. And then V27, uh, is that a frame bundle of the sphere, V27. Of the sphere? Oh, yeah. Unit sphere bundle of S6. I mean, like, ta unit tangent bundle of S6. I mean, is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sphere bundle of S6. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, is the standard, uh, standard notation is usually V72. Oh, so sorry. I, uh, I, I, might have, yeah, I might have mixed that up. I'm, I'm not sure. Two yeah, two, two frames. I mean, it may cause confusion later if you are going to use two of them. Uh, uh, it's like changing G and two and uh, two and two. Uh -huh, anyway, I see. Yeah, if you get I see. used to this, just use it. Uh, well, I know. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, it's just two frames in uh, seven space. Like, so I, that's why I kind of wanted to like write this explicitly here. Um, in the map from the two seven, what's it? S5? Uh, oh, this is S6 here? S6. S5. I mean, oh, it's just projections S5 of... S5 to seven is a sphere bundle over S6. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is... Yeah, this is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a S5 bundle over S6, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the unit, unit sphere bundle of... Uh, S6, yeah. What is the, I mean, if you have two frames there? Uh, you just projected the first uh, frame? To the first frame. Yeah, that's, that's uh, uh, surjection onto S6, yes. and the fiber is S5. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is, like, the overall it's the S3 vibration over S6, S5 vibration over S6, like G2 itself. So if you have two 
frames in cell space, you use one of the unit vectors to get a sphere. In. Right, so yeah. One, mm -hmm. There's an S6. There's another vector perpendicular that you put it on the tangent to S6. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Unit tangent. Exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Unit tangent, the bundle of S6. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. So this immediately tells us many things. Uh, like at the very least, it tells us about its uh, dimension, but it tells us about its connectedness properties, its compact, and so on. We will just so we'll state these um, uh, as a corollary now. But before that, maybe let me give you one warning at this point. Uh, similar statements also hold for like complex G2, but it's just a little harder to, I mean, it's just, you have to be a little bit more careful when you're uh, writing thing, these things down. So there, you're not really looking at orthonormal two frames in seven space, but again, you know, orthonormality with respect to the symmetric bilinear form. Um, so it's so it's basically like a complexification of, um, so, so the base space will be this thing, and uh, I mean complexification of this, and the Fiber will be a complexification of this, and they will contract to these things again, actually. The compact part will still be uh, these things, but uh, we will not um, discuss that. It uh, requires, um, I mean, you, we should be much more careful when we start, uh, well, a little bit more careful when we discuss those things. Um, so we will not really focus on those things. So, the, okay, let's state the corollaries. Um, the first corollary is that G2 is a subgroup of actually SO7. Right, because we see that it's, a, it's connected. Uh, so therefore, and it's inside oct uh, orthogonal group, so it must be inside the connected component. So the second is the dimension of G2 is 14. Uh, maybe third is G2 is compact. And... Um, is the compact version compact? No, it's, it's not, yeah, no. Uh, but it's, it, it's compact subgroup is G, this compact G2. Uh, and finally G2 is two connected. Um, so I will all only sort of talk about this last one. Um, it's it's too connected. Well, because the, the this first of all, this base space is four connected. You know, it's it's an S uh, S five vibration over S six, and the fiber is itself is S three, for um, over this you know Stiefel manifold is S three, which is two connected. So basically, that's you know using the uh, homotopy. Uh, long exact sequence, uh, you can see that uh, G2 will also be two connected. And another corollary of this is that uh, G2 acts transitively on the Stiefel manifold, V27. Okay, uh, so basically, I mean, you, that, that's, that sort of follows from the proof of, of this uh, th theorem that we, uh, I mean, the, the proof that we have here, actually. So this, this um, okay. So because because you're you're okay, you're free to choose this U and V to be anything when you're when you write down a G two triple, uh, you can you know given any element of V two seven, you just um, okay. Maybe let's write this here.
So given an element of V27, um, find W such that uh, they, they form a triple. And then you just act on, um, by, by, by definition, in, uh, in this correspondence that I wrote down here, uh, the corresponding element of G2 will be, will be taking um, I, J, L to uh, U, V, oops, sorry. Well, yeah, okay, U, V, W. So in particular, if you just look at the first two components, you will be sending ij to uv. So you can send ij to any orthonormal 2 uh, frame in sense space. Um, so, th so basically that's, that's why g2 acts uh, transitively on, on uh, the, the set of all uh, two frames in, in sense space. Um, okay, so now we will. Um, so we're moving towards a different definition of G two uh, that's more suitable for uh, for like in applications in like uh, differential geometry. And for that purpose, we will define a cross cross product operations. Um, so. Could you repeat the action? I mean, so, so uh, I mean, so the, the, the I mean, this is, a, this is an element of GL, you know, this thing basically, uh, or like G2, you know, is a subgroup of this thing. So it just acts on the vectors already. You just act on the pair. Uh, and, and by definition, you know, I, I mean, well, in the previous theorem, we discussed that you can construct, you know, this homomorphism. So there will be actually an S3 worth of, uh, elements in G2, which will take, you know, IJ to whatever f two frame you pick. Um. So, um. so by the way, there, I mean G2 also has a big brother uh, whose name is uh, Spin Seven. Um. There's actually a sort of like an analogous theory for spin seven as well. We will not talk too much about those things, but uh, perhaps in this section, I will talk about a, a few things uh, related to those things as well. Uh, right now, how, how much time do I have? Like, is it five minutes? Okay. So I guess I can, yeah, all right, good, that's good. Um, so, if you have a multilinear map from a vector space, like R copies of vectors, okay, let's just write this explicitly. Of a vector space to itself. Oh, this is an inner product space actually. This, uh, again, you can do, do this over complex numbers actually, but again, you need to use a symmetric um, bilinear form. Um, so we, we will say that L is a cross product if the output vector is perpendicular to all the input ve vectors, and uh, if the norm of the output vector is the norm of the corresponding wedge, pr wedge product of the uh, elements, in the, I mean the input vectors. Okay, so more explicitly, Okay, L is called. Uh, okay, let's let's state it here. L is called an R fold cross product operation if so. The following two things hold: one, the inner product of V i with L of V one through V r is zero for all i. And two, if the inner product of 
I mean, if the norm of L of V1 through Vr is equal to the norm of the V1 wedge, V2 wedge, so on, Vr. Um, so here I'm using the induced norm on the wedge exterior product, uh, I mean exterior algebra, but uh, uh, so we, we, can, we can sort of avoid that language actually if we start with, if the input vectors are orth orthogonal to begin with. Okay, so let me add that as a, uh, okay, exercise actually, or, or like a remark, whichever you prefer. Um, well, okay, actually we, we require one more uh, property from L in this case actually. So if L is an alternating map, Um, then the second condition is equivalent to uh, the norm of L V1 through Vr being uh, the norm of V1 times norm of V2 and so on, VR, for all orthogonal vectors, we want through we, we are, okay. So if you don't want to think about the induced norm uh, on, on the exterior algebra, uh, you can also use this, but of course here, you, you first you need to, I mean, first you have to ensure that L is, L is an alternating map. Um, okay, so um, the brown and gray in 67 proved that there are only like a few possibilities when it comes to cross products. Um, so I have, I guess, about a minute. So maybe I'll just uh, state that theorem uh, next time and uh, start from there. Uh, so, if there are no questions, I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.